Hi, in this video we will apply neural networks for text. And let's first remember what is text. You can think of it as a sequence of characters, words or anything else. And in this video we will continue to think of text as a sequence of words or tokens. And let's uh, rem remember how bag of words works. You have every word and uh, for every distinct word that you have in your data set, you have a feature column. And uh, you're actually effectively vectorizing each word with one hot encoded vector that is a huge vector of zeros that has only one uh, uh, non-zero value, uh, which is in the column corresponding to that particular word. So in this example, we have very good and movie and all of them are vectorized independently. And in this setting, you actually, for real-world problems, you have like uh, hundreds of thousands of columns. And how do we uh, get to bag of words representation? You can actually see that we can sum up all those values, all those vectors, and we, we come up with a uh, bag of words uh, vectorization that now corresponds to a very good movie. And so it, it could be... Um, it could be good to think about bag of words representation as a sum of sparse one hot encoded vectors corresponding to each particular word. Okay, let's mo move to narrow network way. And opposite to the sparse way that we've seen in bag of words, in narrow networks we usually like dense representation. And that means that we can replace each word by a dense vector that is much shorter, it can have 300 uh, values, and now it has any real-valued uh, real uh, items in those vectors. And an example of such vectors is word-to-vec embeddings uh, that are pre-trained embeddings that are done unsupervised in, a, in an unsupervised manner. And uh, we will actually dive into details on word-to-vec in, uh, in the next weeks, but all we have to know right now is that word-to-vec vectors have a nice property. Words that have similar context in terms of neighboring words, they tend to have vectors that are collinear, that actually point to roughly the same direction. And that is a very nice property that we will further use. Okay, so now we can replace each word with a dense vector of 300 real values. What do we do next? How can we come up with a feature description for feature descriptor for the whole text? Actually, we can use the same manner as we used for bag of words. We can just take the sum of those vectors and we have a representation based on word-to-vec embeddings for the whole text, like very good movie. And that sum of word-to-vec vectors actually works in practice. It can give you a great baseline descriptor, a baseline features for your classifier, and that can actually work pretty well. But another approach is uh, doing a neural network over these embeddings. Let's look at two examples. We have uh, a sentence cat sitting there or dog resting here. And for each word, we take a row that actually represents a word to vec embedding of length, let's say 300. And uh, now we want to apply neural network here somehow. And let's first think about the following thing. How do we uh, make use of two grams using this representation? Because when you had a bag of words representation, for each particular two gram, you had a different column. And you had a very long sparse vector for all possible uh, two grams. But here, we don't have word-to-vec embeddings for uh, token pairs. We actually have word-to-vec embeddings uh, only for each particular word. So how can we analyze two grams here? Actually, it turns out that we can look at the pairs of those embedding vectors and you can think of it as a sliding window. So uh, here in, uh, in green border, we have uh, first two uh, words and we take their word embeddings and we want to take all those uh, values and we want to analyze them somehow with narrow network. And for that purpose, we can actually use a convolutional filter that has the same size, that has some numbers, and if you take the values that are uh, pretty close to the values that correspond to cat sitting, that means that when you convolve um, with that filter the 2-gram that is cat sitting, you will have a high activation. 
just because the, the convolutional filter is very similar to the word embeddings of these uh, pair of words. And okay, so now we know how we can analyze two grams in our text. We just convolve uh, uh, the word vectors that are near. But why is it better than bag of words? Uh, in bag of words manner, for each particular two gram, we had a different column. And here we have to come up with a lot of convolutional filters that will learn that representation of two grams and will be able to analyze two grams as well. Why is it better then? It turns out that using a good property of word to vec embeddings, uh, which is the following, that similar words, similar in terms of the context uh, that they are seen in, uh, similar words uh, have uh, they are similar in terms of cosine distance, and uh, the cosine distance is similar to dot product. And dot product is actually a convolution that we're doing. So that means that if you take a different sentence, like dog resting here, you can actually uh, find that cat and dog have uh, similar representations in word to vec just because they're seen in, in the same context, like my dog ran away or my dog ate my homework. And you can use, you can replace dog with cat and that would be a frequent uh, sentence as well. So, uh, why a convolutional filter is better? Because you can take an n-gram dog resting uh, and thanks to the fact that uh, those values are pretty similar to the values of a, a two gram cat sitting. That means that when you convolve it with the same convolutional filter, you will have a high activation value as well. So it turns out that if we have some, if we have good embeddings of our vectors, then using convolutions, we can actually uh, look at more high, le high level uh, meaning of the two gram. It's not just cat sitting or dog resting or cat re resting or dog sitting, it actually animal sitting. And that is the meaning of that two gram that we can learn with our convolutional filter. So this is pretty cool. Now you don't need a lot of columns for all possible two grams. You just need to look at the pairs of word embeddings and learn convolutional filters that will learn some meaningful features. Okay, so you can see that that can be easily extended to three grams, four grams, and any other n gram. And uh, contrary to bag of words representation, your feature matrix won't explode because your feature matrix is actually fixed. All you change is the size of the filter with which you do convolution, and that is a pretty, uh, pretty um, easy operation to do. You can also see that just like in convolutional neural networks, uh, one filter is not enough. You need to track many n-grams, you need to track many different meanings of those two, three grams, and that's why you need a lot of convolutional filters. And these filters are called 1D convolutions because we actually slide the window only in one direction. Contrary to, let's say, image, where we slide that window both in, uh, in two directions. Uh, and let's see how that sliding window actually works. We have an input sequence cat sitting there or here. We have for each word a uh, word to vec representation. And we have that sliding window of size 3. And let's add some padding so that the size of the output is the same as the size of the input. And uh, let's convolve the first, uh, the first patch that we got from this matrix. And let's say we get a 0 0.1, then 0 0.3, 0 point, minus 0 0.2, 0 0.7, and 0 0.4 minus. And what you actually see here is that we slide that window only in one direction, and that direction is actually time. You can think uh, about uh, the sequence of words that happen in time and that words occur on time axis. Okay, so what do we do with these numbers now? The, the bad property is that we have the same number of outputs and it is equal to the number of inputs. That means that if you have variable length of sentence, then you have variable number of features. And we don't want that because we don't know what to do with that. Uh, so let's assume that just like in a bag of words manner, we can actually... Um, we can actually lose the ordering of the words. 
Uh, that means that we don't really care where we've seen uh, a 2 gram, meaning animal sitting, that we actually try to find with this convolutional filter. We don't care where it occurred, in the beginning of the sentence or at the end. Only, the only thing we care is whether that combination was actually in the text or not. And if you, if, you, uh, if you assume that, then all you can do is you can actually take the maximum uh, activation that you got with this convolutional filter going through the whole text, and you take that value as the result of your convolution, and that is actually called maximum pooling over time. Just like in images, uh, they have maximum pooling, here we apply it over time. So, what we've done, we take an input sequence, we've, uh, we've proposed uh, to take a convolution window of size 3 by the number of, uh, ver number of variables in embedding, and we convolve with that filter sliding in one direction, and then we take the maximum activation, and that is our output. Okay, let's, let's come to the final model. The final architecture might look like this. We have, we, we can use the filters of size 3, 4, and 5, so that we can capture the information about 3, 4, and 5 grams. And for each n gram, we will learn 100 filters. That means that effectively we have 300 outputs. And let's look at the image. We have an input sequence, and let's say that for, uh, for the red uh, window that corresponds to some convolutional filter, the maximum activation was 0.7, and we have it in the output. For the other filter size, which is in green, and let's say it is for 2 grams, uh, if we convolve it throughout the whole uh, sentence, then the maximum value that we've seen is minus 0.7, and we add it to the output. And this way, using different filters of different size, we have 300 outputs. Okay, so what do we do with that vector? That vector is actually a kind of embedding of our uh, input sequence, and we've uh, proposed a way how we can convert our input sequence into a vector of fixed size. What do we do next is an obvious thing. We just apply some more dense uh, layers and uh, we actually apply multi-layer perceptron on top of those 300 features and train it for any task we want. It can be either classification or regression or anything else. Okay, so let's compare the quality of this model with bag of words uh, approach that is classical. Um, actually, uh, there is a link for the, uh, to the paper where they've done those experiments, and they have a custom reviews dataset, and they compared their model uh, with naive bias on top of 1 and 2 grams, and those classical model gave 86.3 accuracy, accuracy. And uh, if you use this proposed 1D convolutions architecture with MLP on top of those features, then you get whopping 3.8 bump in accuracy, and it gives you almost 90% accuracy. And that is, that is pretty cool, because we, um, we just apply neural networks, we propose how we can embed our words, and we can use a lot of unsupervised text for learning of those embeddings, and we actually proposed how we can analyze 2 grams or 3 grams using convolutions, and that are all pretty uh, fast operations, so it works even faster than bag of words. And it, 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 it works better, so that, this is pretty cool. Okay, let's summarize. You can just average pre-trained word to vec embeddings uh, for your text. So you, you split your text into tokens. For each token, you take an embedding vector and you just sum them up. So that is a baseline model and it can actually work pretty well. Another approach, which is a little bit better, is to use 1D convolutions that we have described. And uh, this way, you train neural network end-to-end. -end. So you have an input sequence and you have a, a result that you want to predict. And uh, you use uh, backpropagation and train all those convolutions to train the specific features that this neural network needs to classify your sentence. In the next video, we will continue to apply convolutions to text.